hello, my name is Stan McGee and I'm the Education Specialist at Harpers Ferry National Historical Park. Today, we're going to be discussing what Marines wore and also what they carried for John Brown's raid of 1859 on Harpers Ferry. And it was in October, 161 years ago, October 16th, 17th, and 18th is when the raid took place. And we are on the anniversary of that raid. And President James Buchanan will send approximately 90 U.S. Marines from Washington Naval Yard, 8th and I, to go to Harper's Ferry and put down the John Brown raid. What you see right here is the Marine uniform. Um, it is the M1839-52 uniform is what the Marines were wearing during this raid. It's very similar to the uniform that was wore by the, worn by the Army in the Mexican War. The only difference is it doesn't have that piping like the Army had on their jackets. You have sky blue jacket. And by the way, this is the fatigue uniform and not the service dress uniform. They came to Harper's Ferry in the fatigue uniforms. You have the short-waisted jacket. You have the trousers. Everything is that sky blue kersey. Pair of ankle high Jefferson boots. And you can see that the um, this Marine is wearing the white cross, the white buff cross straps to support his cartridge box. And also on this side is the bayonet for the model 18. 42 Harpers Ferry musket and it's topped off with what is called the wheel cap um, same type of hat what the um, army was wearing at that time time period as well um, I mentioned the firearm that this marine is carrying it is the model 1842 Harpers Ferry it is a smooth bore, and what I mean by smooth bore is there's no rifling in the bore of this barrel. It is smooth, and this rifle would either fire one 69 caliber ball or another round for this very effective round is called buck end ball, which is one 69 caliber and about three 32 caliber balls all fired at the same time. Now when the Marines were to storm the fire engine house here at Harpers Ferry, they were ordered to go in unloaded because John Brown and his raiders have hostages inside the fire engine house. When the Marines enter the fire engine house, they don't know who friend or foe is. Everyone is dressed in civilian clothes. The raiders are all dressed in civilian clothes. So when these Marines enter the fire engine house, they don't know who the hostages are. They don't know who the um, raiders are. One of the hostages, um, Colonel Lewis Washington, the great grand nephew of George Washington, when the Marines come storming in through the fire engine house, Colonel Lewis Washington points out John Brown and he says to Israel Green, the Marine Lieutenant, he says, there's Osawatomie Brown. And immediately, Lieutenant Green hops over and draws his saber and goes to thrust John Brown in the chest. And it's quite possible John Brown was wearing similar accoutrements to this, maybe some heavy cross harness straps to support his cartridge boxes. He might have had a breastplate too. And when Israel Green goes to thrust him with his sword, the sword, the account reads that his sword bent double. So now he has this useless sword and Israel Green starts to beat John Brown over the head with the hilt of that sword and drags his unconscious body out of the fire engine house. Once the Marines start storming the fire engine house, the fight is over in about three minutes. And John Brown's, the raiders that were in there, some were bayoneted up against the wall. John Brown was drug out of the building by the U.S. Marines. 
and he would be taken to one of the structures across the street from the fire engine house and the overall combat experience military leader who was in charge of the marines even though he wasn't a marine was lieutenant colonel robert e lee and he was also accompanied by lieutenant jeb stewart um, they were both on leave in washington at the time when president james buchanan needs to muster up these troops to go suppress this raid and the reason why he chose the marines is because there were no military troops even close to washington at that time believe it or not keep in mind this is about 16 18 months before the american civil war the closest united states troops would have been at fortress monroe down in hampton virginia it was when the marines were storming the fire engine house there was a casualty and that was private luke quinn and private luke quinn upon entering the fire engine house he'll be shot in the groin and he he would be taken to that same building in which lee uh, in which john brown was taken to as well and private luke quinn was a irish immigrant and his family immigrated to the united states when he was nine years old he was born in 1835 1855 is when he enlisted i believe it was november 23rd of 1855 and he was just short of his enlistment being up it was, he was only like weeks from being discharged from the United States Marine Corps upon his death at the raid at Harpers Ferry. I mentioned the firearms in which the Marines were issued their service weapon, the Model 42 Harpers Ferry. I did not mention yet the firearm, the state-of-the-art firearm that John Brown and his Raiders were carrying. They were carrying the model 1853 slant breech sharps carbine now the example that i have here today is a model 1859 um, very similar to the model 53. these carbines a lot higher fire rate than what the uh, model 42. this model 42 um, was three shots in a minute. That's one shot every 20 seconds. How these Sharps carbines work, you open up the breech, you slide a paper cartridge in there, you close the breech, you cock it, you put a percussion cap on it, and fire. So those Raiders, as fast as what they could load, prime, and shoot, load prime and shoot load prime and shoot as fast as they could do that is the rate of fire so this is the firearm that private luke quinn that marine that was killed on the morning of the 18th of october he was killed by one of the 1853 slant breech carbines and if you want to learn more about these also in our john brown museum um, here in the park. We have on exhibit in that museum, we have John Brown's 1853 Sharps Carbine, and we also have Aaron Stevens' 1853 Sharps Carbine. Thanks for joining us today on this video for our Facebook post today. And if you want to learn more about Harpers Ferry or even the raid of John Brown at Harpers Ferry in October 59, please feel free to go to our park website and it is mps.gov forward slash H-A-F-E or watch more of our episodes on Facebook and even join us. Come visit us at Harpers Ferry Historical Park sometime. Harpers Ferry National Historical Park. Thank you and have a great day.